Yeah, yeah. Another another popular one is product listing. So, uh, you know, specific to the Amazon marketplace, how you list your product, how you create your bullet points, how you create your descriptions, your title, um, and and if you focus in on any keywords through, uh, you know, from Amazon search engine, all of those are really important factors and. If you're a seller that just doesn't know anything about that, then you can find someone who has experience in that and all they do for businesses is list products and optimize them to to appear in search results and to convert people once they actually land on the page. So that's been another popular one for, for clients using us. I'm excited to talk about my sponsors today, Gay Lisby's Million Dollar Arbitrage Group. Amazing, amazing group. This is a teacher. This is, uh, Gay was a teacher. She is a teacher still. You need to learn. This is the type of uh, environment you want to be in because she's going to help you understand why. And I think that's the hardest part of this business is understanding why. Why is the red one popular when the green one isn't? Well, there's usually a reason. And what Gay does is probably parse that better than anybody, and she'll explain the reasons for those things. I think that's really powerful. Yes, she puts out a list. You're going to get uh, get use of that list if you get in the group. Now, here's the deal. The group isn't always open, right? So you get on the waiting list, and you can join the waiting list through my link. Um, doesn't cost you anything to, to get on a waiting list. And if you uh, like her service, which I find that most people do, and that's why there's not so many openings, um, you'll be with her for a long time. And so it's amazingfreedom.com. She's part of Andy Slamet's group, amazingfreedom.com forward slash momentum. And you're going to get in to the waiting list. That's all I can get you on right now. You can use my name and see if that gets you anywhere. But what I like about in that, uh, what I like about what they teach in that group are the things that are going on, you know, the current things. I've seen a lot of stuff going on about stores going out of business. Well, here's where an opportunity is. Here's why you want to do this. Hey, be cautious about this, you know, with Toys R Us coming out. You got to think about this. And that's the learning that you need to do. And gay is better than anybody else I've seen. So um, amazingfreedom.com forward slash momentum will get you to the waiting list. Then hopefully it can get you in the group and then you're going to see me in there and uh, we can chat anytime you're ready. Karen Locker's group, Solutions, the number four e-commerce, solutions4ecommerce.com forward slash momentum. It's going to save you 50 bucks. Karen's our account manager. We recommend her to everyone because she's done so well for us. I mean, that's quite frankly the reason we've been paying her for the last few years, but she's become an important part of our team. Her and her team are so involved in our account. I just see the emails coming back and forth. Hey, we did this for you. I just saw two listings today. And I'm like, wait a second. Why did they show up? I didn't put any listings up. They got, uh, they got uh, set off to the side by Amazon, and they reactivated them for me. You know what I mean? That's the stuff that just happens when you have a strong team, and I can't recommend Karen enough. If you use uh, my code Momentum, Karen pays me. I don't want to hide that. Of course, we all know that, but you're going to save $50, and it's a great opportunity to really, really um, build out your team with somebody you can trust. That's why I recommend them. So solutions for e-commerce, solutions, the number for e-commerce.com forward slash momentum. It's going to save you $50. Oh, and by the way, she's going to do an inventory health report. Why is that important? Well, guess what? Fees are going up. Is your inventory health number declining by prices? Well, here's one, and here's what they can do. What I like is I get a spreadsheet from them, and it says, hey, um, here's a bunch of inventory. Here's what we recommend. And I'm like, yep, refund, I mean, uh, delete, uh, return to us, blah, 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 whatever it is. And it's, or destroy, and it just happens. That's what I like. The other thing that I have Karen help me with a lot is creating new listings. You know, we do a lot of the research ourselves, we upload our images, and then boom, magically the listing goes live, and I don't have to worry about it. Those are the services that Karen offers. I can't recommend her enough. Solutions for e-commerce. Dot com forward slash momentum save 50 bucks use my code you save 50 dollars a month every single month and it's a great service plus you get that free inventory health report i think it's a really powerful way so i can't uh, i'm so excited how many people have been joining her because i see it and i'm excited because I, the messages i get from people are saying hey this is great finally feel like i can focus on something else because karen and her team are watching this for me and you know i highly recommend Next up is Scale Seller Labs and Scope. I almost said it wrong. It's, it's amazing. I mean, it really is amazing when you sit back and think about, hey, I want to get this product up 
and it's similar to this product, and that's it, that product does well. Well, therefore, if that product does well, they have the right keywords, they've chosen things correctly. So guess what? You scope and you can see all that stuff, and that's what the, the most powerful thing in the world is to copy somebody who's done it right. That's what you want to, you want to take advantage of that, right? I mean, it's, it's fair uh, to see, and so therefore you could take and apply it to your listing and immediately get that same benefit. That's what Scope does for me. Sellerlabs.com forward slash momentum. It's going to save you $50 on the service. Oh, by the way, it's free to try. So sign up, try it and say, oh, this is how it's done. Boom. And then you're going to, the light's going to go on and you're going to be like, man, I can get my products out there. I just can't wait. Can't wait. Sellerlabs.com forward slash momentum. The other day, I bought another domain. Yes, I bought another domain. It's almost like uh, I'm admitting guilt. But it's because I had an idea and it was something that was a pretty good idea. I think it's going to go pretty far. And so what do I do? I go to try godaddy.com forward slash momentum and save 30%. So domains aren't very expensive. You get a few services. It adds up a little bit. And I usually buy three years. I usually buy privacy. By the way, I recommend that too. By that, you know, it's not that much money, but when you can save 30%, it makes it that much sweeter and it makes it easier uh, when you're buying domains and especially if you buy a bunch of domains. I am a domain collector and so I do tend to do that, but that 30% makes it a lot easier. And I use GoDaddy because what I like is I can pop in an address I'm thinking and it'll say, nope, nope, try this version or try this extension. And then boom, there it is. Hey, you better hurry before it goes away. And they're right, you know, and so try GoDaddy.com forward slash momentum, save 30%. Also, I want to mention about Grasshopper. Who was I just talking to somebody the other day? And they were like, oh, yeah, I use this company called Grasshopper. I'm like, dude, did you buy it through my link and save 30%? Hello? No, they missed that. So save 30%. It's try grasshopper.com forward slash momentum. No surprise there. But you're going to save 30%. And what the, the real cool part about that is they're using it for their private label business. And it gives them virtually a second phone on their current phone without having to get another number. They can make up a vanity number. They don't have to go and do all the grief and, and sign long contracts. Pretty easy stuff. And so if you're creating a brand that you want to identify, you want to look professional, you want to look like a real company, Grasshopper is a great tool. It's an app you put on your existing phone, and boom, you now have a customer service department. You now have a sales department. You now have a manufacturing division. You could forward it to somebody else. You can have it go to different voicemails, different departments, and it's all included. So try grasshopper.com forward slash momentum. Save 30%. Welcome to the e commerce momentum podcast, where we focus on the people, the products, and the process of e commerce selling today. Here's your host, Stephen Peterson. Welcome back to the E-Commerce Momentum Podcast. This is episode 327, Connor Gillivan. Now that name, you might have seen lately. I, I referenced that um, and I tease him a little bit because you're seeing um, just about everywhere as much as you see the name Nathan Hirsch. Connor and Nathan own a company called Free Up with three E's, right? So we all know who Free Up is. They're everywhere. Nathan has been everywhere. Well, now Connor has come out of his office, and he's out there uh, in front of us talking about the company. And it's very cool to hear his perspective because he's been back there building out the infrastructure, right, doing a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff. A lot of us can relate. And so he's now out here talking about things, and I think his perspective is good. I think some of his work history, you know, you'll sit there and say, wow, he was working in landscape, or his mom did this. But that perspective, when you see problems, right, think about your own business. Think of the pinch points in your business. Next time you see somebody else having them, you have advice for them because you know what not to do because you don't like it in your business. And so it's pretty cool. And then you apply that on your business. It really gets cool. And so I, I just think it's very neat that he's made those connections. Um, really neat. Neat guy. And I, I love their company. I mean, I use them. And they've been sponsoring my show now for couple years and uh, again I look for continuity and I address that in this in this conversation but I look for continuity over time again um, I'm going to give you a, a pro tip at the end of this because Steve needs the same pro tip for himself and he's doing it and spend the money um, spend their money and I just think it's worth it let's get into the podcast all right welcome back to the e-commerce momentum podcast very excited about today's guest because we've never met yet 
I know his team. I've used his team for years now. And what's fascinating to me, he was in the shadows and now he's out of the shadows. Connor <laughs> Gillivan. Welcome, Connor. Steven, how's it going? Thanks for having me on today. It is going great. You are out of the shadows lately. I mean, it's like a concerted... <laughs> no, I'm making this point. I noticed, I would say within the last three or four weeks, something's changed because you're out there, Nate, Hirsch from Free Up with three E's, uh, Connor and Nader partners. But you guys are everywhere on every feed, every place. And it's always him because he's at every event. He's such a great guy. He's at every event. But you, you, it's like your cotillion. What happened? How did you get out of the, uh, out of the <laughs> office? What happened? Yeah, of course. So when we first started the company three years ago, we were mainly focused on having Nate be the the face of the business. Um, we, Dude, we set him up he, as the he's CEO. not the prettiest. You could have done better. He's not the prettiest. <laughs> <laughs> right. We set him up as, as the CEO. Um, my my skill set is more, you know, building the website, creating our content, setting up the SEO, uh, building partnerships. So I was really focused on a lot of that for the first couple of years, where we positioned Nate as as the face to to go out and make relationships and and uh, be the the face for the clients and the freelancers. So. He, he's really been doing all of that stuff, going to conferences, doing podcasts. But um, over the past year or so, we, we kind of thought, you know, let's let's bring Connor into this a little bit as well and uh, bring a new personality to the to the brand and to the business. And, you know, hopefully that will just help get a, get us more exposure everywhere. I think it's very smart because I've seen some other groups. I, I always use Andy and Leron and Nate. The three mm. of them split up um, a lot. Like uh, Leron was just at AST. You probably saw it, Leron in AST. Yep. And Andy's here dealing with something, and, and his nephew Nate is dealing with just had a new baby. And so it allows yep. you to still function, right, and still get your name out there. Um, as Jeff Cohen says, if you're not there, your competitor will be there. So it's right. really important. <laughs> so I just think it's really, I think, the other thing I think it's very cool is it's another face to talk to. Because my mm -hmm. bet is sometimes, you know, and I guess it's with me, people see the same person. They're like, oh, he has nothing new to say, you nothing new to sure. say. And, and, and that's not true. But, you know, we're especially since we're guys, we have that, you know. Um, so I think it's really smart, and I think it's uh, it's a great move on you guys' part. But it's absolutely noticeable, um, and it's very cool. And it's very cool because I saw some comments about, I think Nate asked a question, like, what's the value you get from the service, you know? And sure. it was a whole list of different, and people were like, blah, 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 blah. It was, it was pretty <laughs> cool. That's got to feel really good for you. Yeah, no, I mean, it's been an amazing journey so far building this business up. We, we really built it from issues we are having hiring freelancers from other places for our Amazon business and e-commerce efforts. And just over the past three years, it's, it's grown rapidly and we've seen a lot of people that are finding a lot of value out of it. So him and I love that. It's, it's always been something we've been seeking as a business where we can actually make a positive impact on other people. So it's we're, we're getting a lot of that through working with clients and freelancers. Yeah, not many people get to say they actually did make a little dent in the universe. I just used that phrase the other day. But it's right. true. It's very cool um, that somebody actually gets to help somebody and boom, it's like, wait, this actually worked? You actually did what you said yeah. you were going to do? And they actually, oh, whoa, whoa. I'm not used to this, Connor. I'm not used to this. All right, so yeah. let's go back. So you were a seller. And I don't, I don't think people understand that. And I, I've had Nate on a couple of times and mm -hmm. I don't, I think people forget that. And I think right. that's what's kind of special because... I know you guys cross into other industries too. I don't want to say mm -hmm. that you don't. I know you do and you want to. Right. Of course you do. You want to expand your business. But mm -hmm. our business is a weird business. There's a lot of moving pieces. There's a lot of details. It's not like a, uh, you know, uh, even a law office where it's like, hey, right. tra transcribe this document. Well, transcribing the document, it's right or wrong. I mean, that's pretty great. <laughs> There's no, you know, gray area. But, right. but you know, finding wholesale accounts or um, communicating with wholesale accounts, communicating with customers from how mm -hmm. many different, e-commerce systems and stuff like that. It's very, very complicated. So I, I think it's excellent that you guys have both been sellers. Now, are you still a seller? Uh, we are not. We stopped about one year ago just as things ramped up with free up, and we decided to commit our time fully to that. Okay, but you're close. Well, I mean, when you go to every conference, you're close enough to know what's going on and where the pain points are and the problems. For sure, and and we still keep up to date with you know industry events and industry news that's that's going on, so that we're you know as close to it as possible. You know, if we're not in it on a daily basis. So let's go back and, and talk about how you got started. Um, what did you go to school for? Sure. So I went to school for economics and math, actually. Um, oh. The economics 
program was in the business school, so I also oh. learned a lot about business. Yeah. Well, that's very cool. So, so economics wasn't the simple micro and macro. It was from a business approach. Correct. Yeah, Get, uh, getting into all the labor economics and uh, macro micro at the next level and how it applies to businesses and everything. So it was, it was very geared towards a entrepreneurial view of the economy um, as opposed to more of a liberal arts look at it. Yeah, that's a. I mean, of course, I'm a little biased there, but I think that's very powerful. So, mm. what were you going to be? I mean, when you were a kid, what what did you think you were going to be? Yeah, good question. Um, when I was very young, I wanted to be a professional soccer player. That oh, was kind of okay. a, a long shot, right? Um, and then I honestly learned about entrepreneurship at a very young age. Uh, my, my first job was working with a cousin who ran his own landscaping business. Um, and I, I worked for him for five years during the summers and, and time that I was off from school. Uh, so I was always very interested in building my own business from a young age. Didn't really know what it was going to be, but that was kind of where I was headed as I was going into college. When you think back to those times, I mean, I mean that's hard work, son. I'm sure it was fun and it was awful, right? And I'm sure mm. all those things, especially in Albany, probably had snow. Uh, you probably got snow, you know, right up until May, um, you know. Uh, it's probably getting ready to snow soon there. Um, right. But when, when you think about it, when, when you saw the good and the bad, do you remember mm. either, you know, any of that ever sink in for you, um, what you saw that, that owner going through? Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of the biggest things I was able to see, he was in his mid-20s or so and, and kind of getting his, his feet on the ground, uh, you know, buying his first home and figuring everything out and getting engaged and, and getting married and going through all of that. And I got to see that, you know, he was building this business that was supporting him in those personal goals of his life. So I really loved that. Um, but I mean, we had a ton of days where either the weather impacted what we were able to achieve or a certain client was was giving him a lot of issues that then, you know, I could see was impacting how he was having his day and then how it was impacting the rest of the day. So I definitely saw the ups and downs of a business just as an employee of his in that company. And I'm assuming, I mean, this is probably you're going to be like, of course, Steve, duh, um, <laughs> that when you think about the, the free up world, right, the free <laughs> with the extra E up world, that kind of stuff still connects, right? I mean, because that's that guy had yeah. challenges that you could today help. Fair? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We, I see a lot of parallels. Um, and I mean, we, we ourselves go through a lot of ups and downs. We, right now we have over or close to a thousand clients billing with us on a weekly basis. So like you said earlier, not every single thing works out at all times. So there's always situations where you need to jump on a phone call and, and make sure things are are figured out, but that's something we really love doing. We like trying to figure out the problem when they come up and, and make it as good of an experience as possible. So I'm thinking about, you know, people who are like, wait a second, you know, uh, Steve, you want me to spend more money again. You want me to, you know, bring on help. You want to reach into my pockets. Well, I, I don't. I just want to see if you could use help in certain areas. So let's mm -hmm. talk about the areas that, that free up um, although we still didn't finish how you got into uh, selling on Amazon, but we'll get there. I will go back there a second. Cool. Let's talk about uh, free up. Um, the way the places where you see right now that those thousand clients, where are they? Where's that concentration at? Where's that help being mostly used at? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So our core is is still in the Amazon and e-commerce world. So we have a lot of sellers or store owners who come to us for. Uh, you know, product sourcing. So they're they're trying to find either a private label supplier or uh, a brand that they, they could carry through their Amazon store or through their own Shopify store, whatever it may be. And so that's the uh, that's the heaviest right now. That's the heaviest use to, is for sourcing. I would say that's one of them. Okay. Yeah, that's that's kind of you know beginning of the the process for some people. That's one of them. Uh, customer service is another really popular one. So people have growing e-commerce companies and. They need to get that off their plate since it just adds more and more time as you get more and more customers. Well, can uh, we go popular? Can, wait, let's stay deeper there because I don't want to yeah. lose that because I think you're right. It, it's become more popular because you, you have no choice, right? Right. They're selling on multiple platforms. So, you know, I always use this example, selling on Walmart. You know what mm -hmm. Walmart's customer service pro, uh, situation is? Do you ever walk into a Walmart and there's 58 cashier or registers and there's one cashier or two? Yeah. Yep. That's their same approach on their website for customer service today. No, just right. today. I mean, to be fair, they haven't built that out. So you have to have one. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? All the people that went over to the cell 
don't have one. We're all independent mm-hmm. or one or two people. And without sure. a plan for that, they're calling people's cell phones. And they're like, you know, in the middle <laughs> of the night, hey, my uh, my TV's not working or my you know cell phone, whatever yeah. they sold, you know. But that's mm-hmm. a real issue. So let's talk yeah. a little bit deeper about that. So what are you seeing small sellers utilizing Teams for, uh, for customer service? Yeah, so... So customer service can be really useful, but I think that you really have to get your process set up first. Um, so, you know, with Amazon, your customer service is going to be different than, like you were saying, on Walmart, just because of the, the marketplaces and how they work. Um, I would say the first thing that most sellers are, are getting a customer service rep for is answering those emails. Mm, so, yeah. you know, someone's contacting, hey, uh, I, I don't know where my product is. Can you send me tracking information? Okay, they can easily do that. Um, you know, I'd like to set up a return. Okay, the customer service rep has the process. You know, they walk them through that. Or I'd like to cancel my order or I need to do an exchange. All these common situations that you'd run into with e-commerce customer service, you can find someone that, that has experience in that. They can come in. They can handle that for you. And for any elevated situations where there may be an angry customer, they can refer that to you, or over time they can learn to handle it themselves. So it's like a red flag. So we used to call those, right. uh, you know, the hot hot messages. So in that case, in that scenario, they're signing into your Amazon account on a user level that's you can mm-hmm. qualify where they can go, and you can you know put in security and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. but you have clients that are u- utilizing those tools, and I think that's a big one as you scale up that that those mm-hmm. issues start to get bigger. And as the public is more fickle about returns, right? And just, oh, right. you know, they just want to return things. So it's, it's good to qualify. And so, so you have that, that option out there now. That's very cool. Okay. All right. And so the next level, I, I just didn't want to miss that customer service. I just yeah, think it's course. such a big issue that people are starting to come into and they're like, do I want to add somebody? Oh, mm-hmm. you know, I think it's important to also note that not all of your, uh, virtual assist, uh, your team members, right? You call them team members, sorry. Um, not all your team yeah, freelancers are not in the United, are not overseas, correct? You do have United States, uh, U.S.-based yep. people too. Yeah, yeah, we do. We have about 40% are U.S., 40% are the Philippines, and then the remaining 20% are scattered across about 25 different countries. So you can really find someone from anywhere you're looking to hire. So if, if uh, communication skills are important to me for my business and my beliefs or whatever, yeah. you can help me with that. Yes, definitely. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll, yep. mm-hmm. And I'm sure that's not a weird request for some people and some people it doesn't matter, but some people it does. And so, okay. All right. So we got through customer service. You said uh, some other ones that were out there. Yeah. Yeah. Another, another popular one is product listing. So, uh, you know, specific to the Amazon marketplace, how you list your product, how you create your bullet points, how you create your descriptions, your title, um, and, and if you focus in on any keywords through, uh, you know, from Amazon search engine, all of those are really important factors. And if you're a seller that just doesn't know anything about that, then you can find someone who has experience in that. And all they do for businesses is list products and optimize them to, to appear in search results and to convert people once they actually land on the page. So that's been another popular one for, for clients using us. The other thing that you can tie in there, which is what I think people are starting to think about, is they can also help, not maybe not that person, but with Google and the mm. search algorithm, because yep. that is different. Amazon search algorithm is different than yep. Google. They're competing, right? They're trying mm-hmm. to be smarter than each other, both learning and that kind of thing. But mm-hmm. there is an absolute different approach when it comes to Google, which I know from my world. Mm-hmm. And right. um, so you can hire an expert there. Um, one of the big concerns I think people have is, you know, hey, Connor. They're going to see my stuff. They're going to sell it to somebody else, man. I'm (laughs) I'm very concerned. Or, you know, hey, they're working for my competitor. How do I know they're not taking my best stuff and bringing it to my competitor? What kind of what kind of experience have you had with that, especially after doing it for three years? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a great question. Definitely something that clients will ask us from time to time as well. We fortunately haven't seen too many issues with it within the the. Uh, terms of use that freelancers sign as they're getting into the marketplace. There is a section in there uh, for privacy and, and confidentiality of information that they obtain from clients they work with through the marketplace. Uh, so if there is ever a situation where that does occur and the client catches it, we'll remove the freelancer from the marketplace immediately and make sure that they aren't working with any of our other clients. Um, and then in terms of you know taking that information and, and working for a competitor, um, from my experience talking to freelancers, I would say that they, they kind of vet their, 
clients as much as clients want to vet the freelancer and they, mm-hmm. they look for situations where there may be overlap or issues and they, they may even bring it up if, if they find something that's just way too close or they're selling the same exact product um, and then the client can decide, you know, is it can, do I still want to go forward with this or do I want to move away from it and find someone else? So it hasn't been too much of an issue for us, but definitely understand the concern there. Well, it sounds like to me that the um, the freelancers are getting more sophisticated. I was sitting there thinking about have prices risen as the demand has increased, right? So if there's mm-hmm. limited supply and, you know, I, I wonder how the world economy, you know, all that stuff going on. What have mm-hmm. you seen in the last three years? Are there more people wanting to do freelance work? Are they better qualified? Are they um, mm-hmm. looking, are they, are the good ones uh, able to um, demand more? You know, what are you seeing? Yeah, absolutely. I've definitely seen a lot of growth. Um, more and more people are, are looking to freelancing as an option you know, not only as a side gig, but as a, a full-time business they can run on their own. Um, we're seeing a lot more applicants from the U.S., and I know a lot of studies have been published recently that I think around 35% of the U.S. workforce are involved in the freelance economy, and within 10 years, they're expecting it to be closer to 50%. So it, the, the economy is definitely moving towards freelancing in the U.S. Uh, and worldwide. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely a movement that's happening right now. And does this put you in a pretty good position as you build out the, because there's systems, right? I mean, I, I'm assuming mm-hmm. with a thousand clients, that's a lot of moving pieces, a phrase I like to that's use. Right. I mean, there's got to be, you know, and, and everybody's doing something different and it's not like mm-hmm. you can coordinate it all um, without automation. And mm-hmm. is that, uh, you feel like you're positioned pretty well as this continues to grow? That's our goal. I mean, we're always trying to make the the marketplace a better experience for both freelancers and clients than the other platforms out there um, by being very hands on and having great customer support and and being there for both of those parties as they're going through this process. So, yeah, we're we we're always building new systems and processes to try to achieve those two goals. It's it's just you know, can we keep up with it as as we keep growing over the next few years? Hmm. Okay. All right. So we're seeing. Um growth in a whole bunch of, how about accounting and bookkeeping? Uh, mm-hmm. how, how is that going? Because we moved and I'm kicking and dragging to QuickBooks yeah. online. I mean, I've been a, mm-hmm. I've been a QuickBooks user forever and okay. it's always had, you know, PC desktops and that. And I finally went yep. and it, I must admit it is easier. All right. Anna Hill, <laughs> you're right. It's easier. Um, I'm going to say that. What are you seeing there? Yeah, very, uh, very popular as well. I mean, I would say most entrepreneurs don't love bookkeeping or accounting. Um, we ourselves as a company use an amazing bookkeeper from the Philippines and we have a lot of clients who eventually get to the point where they don't want to handle those monthly reports or with e-commerce you have your sales tax reports if you're in the United States. Uh, so there's there's a lot of people who are outsourcing that from their business as well. How about giving up the control? Because that's a, that's a real concern for people. You know, something like that. A, I'm sharing my data with somebody. B, um, are they going to care as much as Susie, who I walk past her desk every Monday, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I walk past that desk. I know her. I know her husband. I see him. I see him in church, you know, or whatever. Yeah. What, how, do, how, do you, how do you overcome that objection? I think that could be a real mm-hmm. objection for some people. Yeah, a couple, couple things. So first, uh, the first thing to keep in mind, especially with freelancers from our marketplace, is most of them are running this as a full-time business. So they're not really looking to, to screw anyone over. They're, they're in this to build their business and they want to find good clients that they can really help grow. Um, so that's just kind of one thing to keep in mind. Uh, the second one is that um, in terms of being worried about it or you know not being able to walk past the desk, I think a really important part of working with someone remote is that you still try to establish a good relationship with them. So you know as you go through the interview process, ask them questions about their personal life, share things about yourself, understand really why they want to get into this relationship. And then in the first few weeks to a month, make sure that you have regular meetings with them. Maybe jump on some video calls if that makes you more comfortable to get to know them and take the time to, to build that trust with someone. Um, it's going to take a little bit of effort, but if you can find someone you really love, just like if you found someone who's working in your office that you really enjoy working with, it can be a good relationship, but you have to put a little bit in to, to get the best out of it. Yeah, and, and I agree with you 100%. If that person, you walk past their desk and you just look up, how you doing, and just go through, and without making a real connection with them, then then they're not they're not there in your business. They're they're showing up, but they're not a real anchor part of it, and that risk, that, that loss will happen at some point. How about turnover? Um, how often 
I mean, if I brought on a freelancer, especially like bookkeeping, where I want them to learn mm-hmm. my, the nuances of my, you know, my state, right? State, each state yep. is different for sales tax and all the rest of that jazz, right? How, how, how stable is your, uh, your force been? Been pretty stable. Um, and we also have a, a no turnover guarantee. So in the rare case that a, you hire a freelancer, you bring them up to speed and they're rolling, but then they have to take another job outside of the marketplace or whatever it may be, they have to leave. Uh, we replace them very quickly, and we also cover any replacement costs that you took to to get that person set up. So we, we try to eliminate that as much as possible. Um, and if it does happen in, in that rare case, we we try to uh, you know rectify it as quickly as possible so that the business owner doesn't take any steps back and they don't have a, a sour taste from hiring that first person and they don't want to hire someone else. You know, looking at some of the outliers, the smaller companies, not these big ones, because I think there's, mm-hmm. you know, they they definitely have to be handled differently. Although a larger company would absolutely use a service like this to fill in for seasonal and stuff like that, mm-hmm. or maternity or whatever, yep. they could fill in a whole bunch of things. But in a smaller company where, you know, we're all so close to it, um, mm-hmm. where do you recommend for people, you know, or what what's the recommended process to start thinking about, is there parts of my business that mm-hmm. I could... I could outsource? Yeah, yeah, good question. So two situations that I like to share. Uh, The first is when you're just completely overwhelmed with all the tasks on your plate. Uh, You want to, that's an opportunity where you could outsource. The second is if you're looking to get into a a new area or new skill of your business that you or anyone on your team doesn't have any experience in. Um, You know, so for the first one, Let's say you you know you're working 60 hours a week and you're just completely overwhelmed and you're spending a lot of your time on those repetitive, mundane tasks that could easily be passed off to someone. You want to create a list of all those tasks, find the easiest one in that list, create the process for it, actually document it somewhere so that it lists out the steps that you've been taking to complete it and where, how you've seen success. Um, and then that's that's the time when you could go out and try to find someone who could take that off your plate for you. Um, and you can start slow. Find someone two hours a day. Okay, those are two hours you now have to work on something else. And then in the second situation where you're trying to bring on someone with a skill set you don't have, let's say you know Amazon PPC or even Facebook ads, so kind of something a little bit more advanced, um, that's another opportunity where you could bring in more of a consultant or expert level person who could help you set up that process. And then maybe they could even help you hire someone a little bit more affordable that could manage all of it for you. Um, but those are two opportunities where you could start to think about outsourcing. Oh, so like a trainer. So you could actually hire a trainer. I didn't think about that. So mm-hmm. so another big item in our world, right, is people are trying to create brands, right? Everybody's trying yep. to build up their private label business and they're trying to get a brand and they want to run click funnel ads and they want to run Facebook mm-hmm. ads and they want to do all this stuff, right? And they want right. to get it out off there. Or they need landing pages. I mean, all that stuff, right? And, and yeah. it's so uh, relevant today for uh, so many people. Um, how available is that, is, uh, that skill set and that force um, with FreeUp? Very available. We have we have people that know advertising, click funnels, sales pages, uh, lead pages. All of all of those types of things are, are very common for for clients through us because it is so common in the e-commerce world. And so that that some so if somebody's saying, hey, I'm uh, I just had uh, Joe Roosterfin on, who invented a whole ton of games, actually board games. Mm. Um, amazing, nice. like genius dude. And you know, there's a good example of somebody that's his thing. Maybe mm. not running Facebook ads, you know, might yep. not be his thing. So, um, but we, I could hire somebody, and they could teach me. Correct. I, I think you described that a little bit earlier. So that ability to teach me or teach somebody on my team is yep. there too. Hmm. Powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just hiring. It's more of like a, a consultant level. So. Hire them for two or three hours. They help you create the strategy around all of it. Maybe walk you through the processes they've seen success with, and then you could pass it off to someone else, or you could, you know, try to handle it yourself. All right, let's let's uh, let's put this out there because I know people are saying, "Yeah, but I can hire these people for two dollars an hour, Connor." <laughs> you don't understand, man. I could. Okay. I'm going to save a lot of money, buddy. You're expensive. You guys are. Uh, anywhere from what's your lowest rate? Is it six or seven? Five. Five. Five, yeah. five up to a hundred. Uh, yeah, 75, 5 75, to 75. 5 to 75. And why would I need a $75 hour employee? I can hire Susie down the street. She'll work for 20 bucks, right? Right. But it does come with the little tax issues, and it does come with workman's comp, and it does come with uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. There are right. little, when you start adding it all together, it's not quite as, uh, but but give an example. Why why would I not want to 
just go out there on Upwork and put my $2 an hour, um, you know, hey, I'm willing to pay $2 an hour. What have you seen? And, and I know you're going to be biased. Everybody's going to be saying, of course, yeah. he's going to say this, Steve. But I mean, this is real. I mean, you're hearing yeah. this argument. So what, what, is you, what do you say to people like that? Yeah. So the biggest thing, the biggest difference is you, you can go and post a job on Upwork or Fiverr or these other platforms um, and you're going to post it and you're going to receive 15 plus applicants. Um, none of them. Hun- been- no, they're 100 yeah. percent qualified for whatever I post. Every one of them. <laughs> I don't care what right, it is. Yeah. I, I was going to I was going to say so none of them have been pre-qualified or vetted by those marketplaces. And it's your job as the business owner to set up interviews with them. Uh, you know, interview them for their skills, their attitude, their communication, and try to find one that is the best fit for you, uh, and then set up expectations, get them into the the role of everything, and and make sure that it all works. Um, that can take a lot of time. We we went through it for about three years where we were using those platforms before we started FreeUp. Um, so it's just a lot of time and money that you put in as a business owner. Whereas with FreeUp, you you come in, you request exactly who you need. We introduce you to one person from the network that's already been interviewed for those skills, communication, and attitude. Uh, one person at a time, you meet with them, see if they're the fit. If they are, you can hire them and manage all of the hours and billing right through the platform. Um, or you can just let us know that you want to meet someone else and we introduce them to you quickly. So we, we've really just taken the whole process of the other platforms and, and tried to speed it up and make it a lot more efficient. Yeah, if I'm busy, me doing all that hiring work isn't going to make me less busy. <laughs> I mean, right? that's just common sense, right? I'm sitting there saying, wait a second, I got to go through all those things. The other thing, you know, having had a lot of employees work for me over the year, you know, that's tough, man. They, they've got lives. They've got personal issues. They've got those kind of things. And you bring that into your workplace. Now, all of a sudden, you got to deal with this. In this scenario, I'm not dealing with that stuff, right? I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's one of the, the nice scenarios. Now, what happens, though, because your freelancers have lives, you know, mm-hmm. how does how's that work? Um, you know, when when situations happen, because they have to. Yeah, for sure. So we do have certain expectations, best practices that the freelancers are are obliged to follow through the marketplace. So one of them is responding within 24 business hours to clients when they're reaching out to them. Um, so that's a big one that we, that we try to uphold for freelancers. And we found that that really helps with clients so that people just don't go and disappear. Um, but when issues do happen, we're there as a marketplace to help resolve them. Uh, that's another big thing about us that's different from these other platforms. You're kind of on your own in those other platforms, whereas with us, you can come directly to myself. You can come to my business partner, Nate. Uh, you can come to our internal team of assistants, and we're there to help you resolve those issues and, and make sure that you either get someone new or you get in touch with that person and, and everything is resolved pretty quickly. Hmm. I love it. So I'm sitting here thinking about a whole bunch of people, and his one of them's named Steve, um, mm-hmm. who are sitting here saying we got a lot on our plates. We need some administrative help. I I would say that the majority of us, meaning yeah. all of us listening to this right now, all all mm-hmm. of you, need some administrative help. I I would say that's probably the number one place you need help. You think it's sourcing? Yeah. You think it's uh, bookkeeping? Whatever. No, sure. it's keeping your all over the place mind on task. I remember this. This is a, this is a true story. So Andy uh, and Nate, Andy Slammons and Nate Slammons, when um, mm-hmm. when they got together, and I think it was Nate who insisted this. Nate yeah. was like, because Andy's all over the place like me. He's just, his mind goes <laughs> everywhere and in a good way, you know, but it's just hard yeah. to keep him, you know, focused, right? And he said the biggest thing that they did for their business was Nate forced them to hire an administrative person. And mm. that person kept them on task. He had a list. Nate had a list. Nate was, <laughs> Nate would, didn't need the list. You know, he's that guy. But and he did. And he's like, oh, yeah, she was all over me, Steve. She was like, you've got to have this done. You know, this is the deadline. And the best practice that they did was they would actually have a conference call. I think it was a weekly call nice. and with her. And she was in there taking notes or whatever and then gave the deliverables. Everybody knew what was expected. Yep. And that takes, well, because you guys, I mean, I'm sure you're in Nate's, uh, you're, you and your partner, Nathan, there, that relationship probably gets muddy sometimes too, right? And you're not sure who's responsible. I think that mm-hmm. that's such a powerful thing that so many of us need, Steve. Um, and really, I think that that skill set, how hard is it to find somebody that, that has, you know, time management, task management skills, uh, using Trello or Asana or one of those systems out there? How hard is that to find? Uh, it's very common. So we have a 
ton of clients who, who hire people exactly for that, just help to keep their day, help to keep their life, help to keep their business organized. Um, and like you said, they're there checking in with them. They're there reminding them of their to-do lists and what they had set out to accomplish in that week. They help them manage their emails. They help them uh, you know, manage their schedule and keep everything as organized as possible. So uh, something that's very accessible, uh, it's, it's just kind of finding that right person that gels best with you and your working habits, um, and then making sure they understand what your expectations are of them. How, what's the minimum number of hours I can hire? No minimums. You okay, so no minimum. So for an hour, yeah, and then. But there are people that hire for five or ten hours a week, right? I mean, that that's not oh, yeah. unusual. And so, yeah, sure. so my suggestion to anybody listening, if that's you, if you're Steve, and you saw, I, I put out on Facebook my to do list for a couple of days. I only did a couple of days. I didn't put today's out because I literally filled it all the way to the bottom of the page, literally. And I'm like, oh man, I don't want to go to page two on this one because some of these things have been there three days. And I, I'm like, all right, I'm not going to show that again because now it's getting embarrassing, right? But right. that's but that's real. I mean, I'm just trying to be real. Um, this is a good place to start if you've been thinking about getting some help because then you get through the system because, you know, it's, not perfect, right? You want to get the communication right. You want to find out yeah. how they bill and all that kind of jazz. This is a nice, safe way to do this. For me, it's project management. I just got so many projects going and I need some help right. with that. And so um, for me, that's where I hire these guys to help me with. And so to me, this is a great place to start. Then when you get to that comfort level, okay, now you have time to work on your business, right? Mm-hmm. Steve, um, you can start working on your business and then you can say, okay, now I want some help with sourcing or I want some help with customer service or I want some help with uh, returns, uh, validation, sure. right? Uh, balancing, going back and making sure that I got my refunds um, mm-hmm. and got reimbursed for it all. Make sure that my uh, inventory going into Amazon, that the box, they didn't overcharge me for size and all that stuff because that's real, right? You're yeah. seeing all that stuff, correct? Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and then how about... Um, spreadsheets and things like that do we have skill sets for that kind of thing too so people doing year over year analysis because i don't i don't Mm -hmm. see a lot of people talking about that in this world Mm -hmm. right now but it's becoming a bigger deal yeah definitely we have we have freelancers that are you know experienced within excel or even just using google sheets and providing either weekly or monthly reports of sales or different metrics that uh, sellers want to keep a track of and then start making decisions based off of them. It's, it's definitely becoming a little bit more popular, like you're saying. Okay. All right. I hope I, I know I pitch their stuff, but I, you know, I mean, again, you know, I pitch who I believe in. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm not apologizing to anybody. So let's go back. I, I do want to get to how you got into selling because you had that entrepreneur. Were your parents entrepreneurs in any way? Just that cousin? Uh, Yes. No, my, my mom was a, she was a editor for a, a publishing company for a number of years, but then uh, she became a, a freelance editor and, and ran her own business uh, oh, from the cool. age of maybe 10 for myself. So she, she worked from home and ran her own company for most of my life. So that was impressed upon you too. Hmm. For sure. And in looking again, you saw the challenges that she went through because this stuff didn't exist, right? I mean, she had right. to manage that herself, <laughs> right? Oh yeah, yeah. No, she had she pulled a lot of relationships that she had from her publishing company, and then you know offered her services to those people, and you know created clients for herself. But but yeah, it was a totally different world. There weren't marketplaces where she could go find uh, you know clients that needed her help. So she's got to be proud. Okay, so you go to college to be this math guy, and what were you going to do with this math degree? Uh, econ and math. I I don't know. I <laughs> I was just interested in learning about business for a. For a period of time, I was interested in going on to higher education and economics and, and kind of seeing where that could take me. But um, Maybe be a was, teacher? Is that what you were thinking at that point? Yeah, potentially into that route. But when I was a sophomore, I that's when I started to run into Amazon and, and met Nate, and we started working together. So from there, it was just kind of in that direction. And you're at college, and there are textbooks, and there are, those things have some money, some value, correct? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, We Nate, Nate first saw the, the issue on campus where – You'd buy a textbook for $500 at the beginning of the semester, and then they'd encourage you to go sell it to the bookstore, and they'd offer you $15. So um, you're, you're again, kind of uh, lowballed there for what you had paid for it. Um, and so he started uh, posting up on campus and purchasing textbooks from students that he knew, and, and then eventually from students that he didn't know, and uh, started listing them on Amazon, seeing what he could get for them. And um, about six months into the business, I, I jumped on board and we, we kept doing the textbooks for a couple of years and then 
ended up hating actually having the textbooks in our, our dorm rooms and our college houses. So uh, we explored the idea of drop shipping. And over the course of the next three or four years, we, we built relationships with over a thousand dropship suppliers and brands around the United States. And we were their, their arm of Amazon for selling there since they didn't, they weren't doing it before or they didn't know anything about it. And so you guys were able to scale that and you scaled it pretty big. Um, how, here's something I think is a fair question. Now you guys have been partnered in some way then for more than three years. So four or five years. Uh, close to nine years now. Oh, we dude. started that first business in twenty or two thousand nine. So nine years almost. How <laughs> do you how do you deal with that? Because I think that's a real issue for people. Is how because you're a different type of people, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you're, that, that's what makes for a sure. good couple, right? And mm-hmm. how how do you deal with uh, with the strengths, his strengths, your strengths? I mean, you yeah. clearly were comfortable sitting back because that's what you agreed to for a while, and now you're mm-hmm. coming forward. I, I'd be interested to ask him the same question now. How does he feel mm-hmm. now that you're coming forward? Is that <laughs> uncomfortable for him? Because he was the guy, right? right. He was that guy. Uh, yeah, so we, we went through a lot of back and forths uh, in the first, I would say, three to four years of working together when we were on the first business. We are very different people. Um, I'm much more of a long-term thinker. He's very short-term. Uh, I, I value, you know, writing and content and uh, that side of things, whereas uh, he's more of the uh, the relationship with the client type of deal and um, working on shorter term projects. So we had a lot of battles in terms of how to run the business at first that uh, we had to talk through and, and figure out. But what we in, what we eventually realized was we have very different skill sets, but that's a, a great thing for a partnership because we can work on different aspects of the business. And then just after working with each other for that many years, we've built up an an amazing amount of trust with each other where, you know, I can be working on something totally separate from him and he the same, but we we trust what each other is doing. We we convene for brainstorming and for coming up with new ideas and pushing each other and motivating each other. Um, And then we also make sure we all we always have the same, let's say, one year vision in mind so that we're we're headed in the same place and, and we're never arguing over uh, issues with how the business is growing and how we're managing financials and things along those lines. So it, it's been very much a a marriage, so to speak, and a, and a process to get to where we are today. But it's it's been it's been a good one, and and we have a really great relationship today. It's very cool. Um, you're not in the same office, correct? Correct. Yeah, okay. he lives in Orlando, Florida, and I'm in Denver, Colorado. I think that also works. It's funny. A lot of couples I've interviewed that are sellers. Um, so a couple of the real successful ones, one works on one floor and the other one works on another floor. Right. And, and I get it. I get it, you know, cause you can't spend 24 hours together. And so I get that. And I just think that that's funny when, when you think about, um, looking back over the last three years, what point did you know that free up was a win? I mean, there, there had to be a point where you said, huh, yeah. you know, I know you're solving a problem for yourself. You're scratching your own itch, but when did you like, whoa there's really something here. Yeah, I think it was about a year, a year maybe yeah, a year, year and a half into the business. Um, we, we started creating really great relationships with other Amazon coaches, e-commerce uh, coaches and agencies. And we saw a really big upturn in the business. And I think that's both when we, we looked at each other and we were like, wow, there's, there's potential here. There's, there's something we can do with this and, and we should really commit ourselves to it. Let's, let's see where we can take this. Um, so I, I think it was at that point we saw, we saw the hockey stick growth and, uh, we, we want, we knew we wanted to keep going with it. But no fear for either of you. Uh, I mean, there's always fear being an entrepreneur and building a, a new platform, a new service that is a little bit different than others. And, having to go out and and get and keep clients and, you know, find freelancers for for our marketplace. But uh, I don't know. We've been doing it for a while. We both love being entrepreneurs. The the fear is almost uh, an extra motivation for us that that keeps us going. So, yeah, not not too much fear, but there's always a little bit there for sure. Apprehension might be a better word, right? That that might be the right word. Hmm. So looking out, what do you see is the future for FreeUp? Um, I mean, to be honest, right, you're going to expand outside of just the e-commerce world. I, I think if you don't, it'd be silly because this skill set will go back to your first job, right? That guy needed your help. 
He absolutely yeah. could have used some administrative, that what we were just talking about that Steve needs, yeah. right? You, he could use that help, somebody scheduling and handling customer service, handling calls, sales calls, sales leads. I mean, all that stuff can be, still be done. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that real for you guys? Uh, yes, absolutely. We're, we have seen a lot of traction outside of the e-commerce industry over the past year, and we're, we're making concerted efforts to, to move into different industries. Uh, the marketing world has, has been a big one for us over this past year, and we're seeing a lot of potential there. And then uh, another potential move for the business over the next couple of years is trying to cater to larger enterprise level e-commerce companies as well and uh, being a resource for them to meet pre-vetted agencies that offer specific services and skill sets that they may be looking to outsource from their internal staff or uh, internal office. Well, give me an example of that because I think you had me up until the word agencies. Okay. Yeah, sure. So... Um, so uh, let's say a Facebook ad agency, it's a team of 10 people. They specialize in working with larger companies to run their Facebook ad campaigns and accounts and budgets. Um, so, you know, we'd be looking for, to connect them with a, a larger e-commerce company, you know, internet retailer uh, who has okay. a, let's say $5,000 per month budget, connect those two. They're looking for a very high touch, high level, uh, management agency to work with and we're kind of that connector for them it's almost like a seal like a seal of approval in essence that they've been vetted yeah right. they've done clients um uh, uh, they've worked for other clients and they've been approved like a, almost you know it's funny how my son is probably your age and i think about mm-hmm. he will not make a decision without reviews i mean his whole world right. is like i mean i we can't do anything i'm like let's go eat <laughs> hold on and he's pulling up yelp or one of those things and right. i'm like i'm like dude it's pizza He's like, oh, no, 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 Dad, no, we're going to do it this way. And and I'll be fair, he's right, because, you know, it didn't have a good review, see? And then he, he always proves me, you know, that he's right, of course, <laughs> and he's his father. But um, I think that that's real, I think, because everybody says they're good at every. We're back to the Upwork thing, right? I put yeah. an ad out there, and I need somebody who's left-handed, who can key in one finger, and blah, blah. A hundred people. Yeah, I can do it. Anything. Name it. Any, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. How can everybody be? But that's the truth. Everybody says they can, whether they really deliver. Oh, very, very cool. And it's very cool to see you guys uh, build it slowly. I think that because it can't come at the cost of the rest of us, right? I mean, that's mm-hmm. a real thing you have to be mindful of. So I think that's really important. All right. So I, I do have a last question about process improvement, and I think you're probably going to be the guy to answer that. But if somebody has more questions and they want more information, what's the best way to get uh, in touch with you or in touch with Nate? Yeah, of course. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you a link so they can set up a, a meeting directly with me. They'll have access to my calendar. Um, anyone can email me as well. It's just connor at freeup.com. And then also if you just go to freeup.com and click schedule a meeting at the top, there's a, there's direct links to both my calendar, Nate's calendar, our emails, and I, I think our Skype accounts as well. So we're, we're very easy to get in touch with, and I'd, I'd love to speak with anyone that was listening today. Well, and I appreciate it. They've been sponsoring my show, and, and I appreciate the relationship that I've had with them for a while. Um, it's been it's been quite a while, um, yeah. and it's been a good relationship. Again, you know, as I, I said to Connor, I always just ask for one thing, is that if there's a problem, that they respond. I mean, that's only yeah. my—because, you know, I don't want to ever fun. recommend something to somebody— my heart would bleed if they took my advice and then boom, it just blew up because they yeah. turned out to be terrible. I don't want those. I don't want that negativity in my life and I don't want to hurt anyone. So I do have a deal uh, for anybody who's interested in it. It's the same deal that they've been offering, but it's a good one. And here's the deal. They've been offering it for a while. And I think that that's, the, again, the sign of, I always say, I look for continuity. I always mm. look for somebody over time. Are they even? Because everybody can come in and say, oh, I can do this. I'm the best thing since sliced bread. Right. And then they're gone. Next thing you know. They're gone, right? They're in and out. And then it's the lack of uh, continuity that really hurts. And so it saved 10% forever, which I like forever. That's a long mm-hmm. time, my whole lifetime. Um, mm-hmm. If you go to free up with three ease.com and it's forward slash e commerce momentum is the code. But they also give you a $25 credit uh, the first time you use them. And so, mm-hmm. you know, what we're talking about, I, I 100% ask anybody who's struggling with administration stuff, Steve, um, to hire someone and use the $25 credit, you know, hire yeah. five hours, you know, and it costs you almost nothing. See if there's a difference, you know, see mm-hmm. if, especially if you're project oriented like I am, see yeah. if you see a difference and then sit back and say, man, for this small amount of money, this whole 
weight is off my shoulder. I'm not carrying this burden home with me every single night. It's a huge deal. And I just think it's so awesome. And it's free up with three E's again, freeup.com forward slash e-commerce momentum. Um, save the 10%, get the 25 bucks, take it while they're giving it and uh, <laughs> use it. So, all right, dude, here we go. All right. This is the big deep thought. So the, the goal of the podcast is for people who get stuck because you guys have seen it, right? They're, you know, they're sure. selling $30,000 a month and they're not living well on $30,000 a month. If you're selling on Amazon, for example, you're not mm-hmm. doing so hot because, you know, with, you know, returns and all the rest of that jazz, they want to scale, but they haven't been able to get past that point of stuck, right? That's just one mm-hmm. of the places I see it so many times. And there's a myriad of reasons. Give us something that you suggest is a real meaningful way that they can improve maybe it's process maybe it's you know maybe it's higher free up but whatever it is but to help them really get forward um on that business and and just get past that point yeah absolutely so i I think it's you know it's not about necessarily hiring but it's it's more about your mentality right Mm. so you as a business owner want to make sure that you're valuing your time at the the highest level possible and that you're spending time where you make the most impact on the growth so you know, if you're best at listing products because you know how to do that really well and it, it leads to more sales, that's something you should be doing on a regular basis, um, and you should be trying to get everything else off your plate. Um, maybe you, maybe your current product selection isn't working, and you're really great at finding other products that could sell. You know, that's where you should be spending your time. Um, but it's it's kind of this mindset. You know, as an entrepreneur, I think when we're starting, we we sometimes feel obliged to just put everything on ourselves and never want to pass it off to someone. Um, but if you can get into a mindset where you're really valuing your time, you're making sure you're focused on where you're adding the most value and making the most impact and trying to delegate the rest, over time, you know, let's say three to six month period, you're going to start to see changes and you're going to start to see your business grow as well. So just, you know, something to keep in mind as, as we leave this podcast. And I think that three to six months is a big deal too. I think you have yeah. to, to you, you know, you can't look next week. Because mm-hmm. not much is going to change this week to next week. You want to see meaningful improvement over time. We're back to the consistency discussion, right? That meaningful yep. improvement over time, that consistent approach, that's when you start to see. And it gets, it's a snowball. It gets bigger and bigger mm-hmm. the further out it goes. Um, I'm mm-hmm. doing a, some weight loss thing. And I'm looking nice. at year out. My plan is a year. I'm not losing my weight next week. Yep. I'm not cutting, eating, you know, three grapes and calling it done. I'm looking a year out. Why? Because I want that continuity. And I think, I think that's real solid advice. Connor, I'm very, uh, very impressed. Uh, it's nice to see you have your cotillion and get out of the office. <laughs> so you're finally out yeah. and uh, we'll actually get to meet one of these times face to face. I really appreciate you taking the time. I mean it. And I appreciate what you guys do um, because I've seen so many people go out there and look at what Nate posted about what's the best part about using the service and you'll mm-hmm. see real people. And then my suggestion is, and I always tell people, if you connect with this, then this is a great place to go. If you don't, sure. don't, mm-hmm. but go look at what those people posted, message them. Those are real people out of Facebook. Message them and say, hey, what are you talking about? Wait, they did this for you? And to me, that's the best. And it's kind of, it's not invisible. It's not the right word to use. But uh, you guys are letting people see behind the curtains. And I just think that Mm. that, the more you do that, the better it is. So thank you so much. I wish you nothing but success. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on, Steve. I appreciate it. Great guy. uh, Good company. And again, I I think the thing that they're really smart about is that they didn't jump into these other industries. They're building this one out first. They're getting working out all the kinks, making sure that they don't lose because it's easy to move into a hot market. You know, oh, let's go into cryptocurrency, right? Everybody's into cryptocurrency at the expense of everything else behind you. But that foundation you need to have, right? And so I think these guys are really smart because they're they're making sure their foundation here is really strong before they move on to other things. Most people don't think that way. Most guys are not patient enough. And so that's a maturity for two guys way younger than me. I think you had their age together. I'm older than them, these young dudes. EcommerceMomentum.com. Take care. Thanks for listening to the E-Commerce Momentum Podcast. All the links mentioned today can be found at EcommerceMomentum.com under this episode number. Please remember to subscribe and like us on iTunes.